61-year-old Rob Evans from Arizona is getting a new heart tonight in what will be a rare and extraordinary transplant at Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. Rob suffers from a condition called cardiomyopathy. His heart is failing. Having cardiomyopathy, I've been healthy enough to be able to do the things I needed to do to make a living, uh, but not healthy enough to be me. Unlike traditional heart transplantation where the donor heart is stopped, put on ice, and transported in a cooler, Rob's new donor heart will be one of the first in the country to span the miles in almost science fiction-like fashion, still warm, still beating, in a box. This technology takes the organ out of the donor, puts it on a uh, platform where it continues to pump the donor blood into the heart, maintain it in a near physiologic state, in a warm beating state during the transport. This is a clinical trial. Assuming that this technology proves to be um, as good as the uh, current preservation techniques or possibly superior, this technology opens the door for a new way of uh, preserving organs, improving patient outcomes, and transporting organs from one center to the other. To tell you the truth, it's a well duh thing for me. You know, the, as long as we can, uh, as long as the technology is available, um, what well, seems, seems like, of course, a, a warm heart would do better than having to restart a dormant cold heart. The donor heart arrives at UCLA, beating steadily and continually assessed. Rob's diseased heart is removed, his circulation and oxygen supply taken over by a heart-lung machine. His new donor heart is now briefly put to sleep with special drugs. All right, there you go. Removed yeah. from the box and sewn into place. Well, this new technology allows us to um, take the heart and put it on a machine that keeps it beating and keeps blood flowing through the coronary arteries instead of just taking the heart and packing it in ice. And we're hoping to be able to demonstrate that we can better preserve the heart, get better function, and be able to travel longer distances so that we can get more hearts to patients in this area. Andrea Yabara of Whittier, California, became another one of the world's first beating heart in a box transplant recipients at UCLA after a virus attacked her heart, leaving it weak and unable to function. When I saw this heart in a box, I was like, wow, you know, and I couldn't believe it. It's like, is this, you know, really happening? Can they do this? The technology that was presented to us, it, it, it was amazing, but I didn't really have a, a wow until I seen the, uh, the way it's done, you know, it, it, it is amazing. In August 2010, Andrea agreed to participate in the clinical trial to study this experimental donor heart transportation system. Once they take it from the donor and they freeze it, you don't know what you get, you know, and, it, and this way they watch it, they look at it, they feed it nutrients, and sometimes it's even stronger um, as they take care of it. When, from when it leaves a donor, when it gets the recipients a little stronger. And in a weird way, you know what you're getting. So if the heart stops, something's wrong, defect, they can see it right away. Rob's family hopes this new technology, should it be approved by the FDA, will make more hearts available and shorten the waiting time. We waited three and a half years for a heart. So, and in that three and a half years, we had another heart attack, we had pneumonia a couple times, you know, is he gonna live? to get the heart. Anything to shorten that time frame is just fabulous. The new heart is working perfectly and everything just turned out great. This beating heart in a box clinical trial is in its final phase. 128 patients are needed worldwide to complete the study. To date, 20 patients have enrolled at UCLA. It's a randomized study, so just half received their hearts with this latest technology. But all 10, including Andrea and Rob, have been successful. First, I have to start at the top of my wife's list of things that I have to do when I get back to Arizona. 
And if I ever make it to the bottom, then, then I'll be back on my horse and I'll be um, back running my business. And, and, you know, the respect and frankly love we have for the donor's family um, will always be a part of our lives. It's a whole new life for me, I can say. In my 20s, my goal was start a family, give life. My 30s, I'm fighting for life. 40s, I'm gonna enjoy life.